Thank you very much. Um, um, it's great to be here. It's great to be have somebody talking in a very positive way about technology, um, in my view. Um, I spent 10 years in uh, livestock research. Um, I left it because I felt that there was so much technology that was out there that just wasn't being applied. And it frustrated me. And I still believe that there is uh, an incredible skewing of resources, in my view, towards technology development and not nearly enough going into the distribution and, and access of people to the existing technology. But when I came back to this country after about 20 years and in the field in Africa and Southeast Asia, I was completely disconcerted by the development community in this country in their very negative attitude to science, to technology, um, and a rather lazy, I thought, um, conflation of science technology with big business and uh, a whole host of very um, bad things, as well as, uh, to some, with some justification, um, the simplicity of a silver bullet, the technology as being the silver bullet, the magic bullet that we're all looking for in development. And clearly that is not the case, and nothing that Gordon has said has, uh, supports that view. It's a very complicated story that we're working in always on farms in Africa, Technology has a really, really important role to play in driving change. And there are many, many g good examples. And in my field in livestock, the example that I give, because I really feel it's so, so under-recognized, is the eradication of rinderpest from this planet, which was done through uh, a fantastic vaccine developed in very conventional ways many years ago and was uh, taken a, a leap forward uh, when it was um, uh, turned into a thermostable vaccine that didn't require a cold chain. And that meant immediately that uh, people could take it into these remote, difficult, often very dangerous places um, into um, new, new markets effectively. And I feel that this is a massive, massive achievement um, and uh, is grossly um, under-recognized, I think, in the, in the sort of development world more generally. Um, I think we all know that technology by itself is, is just not enough and, and the rise of the sort of participatory research methods um, uh, uh, indicate this. Um, I do worry now when I meet researchers that now participatory research has become the sort of um, uh, standard practice um, that I feel it, it's become somewhat formulaic in its, in its approach that uh, people sort of realize that this is what donors want to see, but actually the reality on the ground is a lot of very conventional thinking and practice. And it's so obvious that there needs to be this bringing together of scientists, farmers, and indeed extension um, uh, workers of various kinds as well. And we in Farm Africa um, were one of the real, real pioneers of participatory research in, uh, uh, in Ethiopia. In, uh, and uh, were perhaps rather ambitious, I think, for a tiny little NGO as we were at that time, certainly in trying to bring uh, research uh, centres, extension services and farmers together in, uh, on farmers' fields. Um, and I think uh, it's, it's obvious to me that farmers need to be the driver but not the sole driver of uh, determining what technology um, uh, is, is uh, developed. Uh, there is a need, for my, in my personal opinion, for the very, very best science being applied to the problems of the poorest people. And it doesn't happen, of course, because of the nature of resource allocation um, on our planet. But I would very much like to see it, and it, it's a welcome uh, to me that uh, people like the Gates Foundation are putting some serious investment behind uh, the major diseases that uh, confront people in... in uh, uh, the places that we, we are talking about at the moment. But for me, um, the, the challenge remains distribution, access to technology, any technology, whether it's good indigenous technology, um, conventional technology, or more advanced technologies. And uh, I think I, I get very, um, really quite annoyed, actually, with some of the work that uh, people like IFRI do and others in looking at returns on investment from R&D when actually there is absolutely no return for on investment in R without the D. And at the moment, what you see in resource allocation um, uh, across the, the agricultural research and development spectrum is that there is a very significant investment and a growing investment in agricultural research. 
I think a lot of that is driven by the fact that research organizations generally in, Afri in the African setting are reasonably functional, actually, whether they're international research centers or national research centers, whereas clearly national agricultural extension systems and advisory services are deeply dysfunctional in most countries. And this, uh, I think, is where um, the, the, this, the whole space for small and medium-sized enterprises, the private sector, has to play a really critical role. Um, if government services are withdrawn, NGOs can come in and fill small plug small gaps, but actually the private sector needs to be there. And I think we in the development community need to be um, much more aware of it. I think uh, whenever I see uh, literature talking about all the development actors and private sector just listed along with NGOs and everybody else, actually the driver of major change um, has to be the private sector and is indeed the private sector. And I feel that uh, we are very, very uh, myopic and blinkered in our view of actually what's going on in rural Africa at this point. Um, Gordon raised the, uh, uh, highlighted the role of agro-dealerships. I think these are absolutely critical people. Um, and what we need to see is a way of getting, if you like, ethical business, uh, ethical supply of inputs, as well as proper advice supporting the use of those inputs. So um, you are actually building the trust of farmers on the back of giving advice as well as selling them a product. And uh, this is certainly an area that we in Farm Africa are going to explore um, in the field of uh, veterinary services. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. Chris, if you want to come and join us.